Welcome. In this video we're going to be testing the DJI version 2 goggles with various antennas and looking at its both range and penetration. I'm starting off here with the air unit using the standard antennas on the air unit and also using the stock antennas on the DJI goggles. Now this may be a bit problematic because these are using linear polarization whereas the air unit uses LHCP. So there is a bit of a mismatch and this is what I actually noticed when I first got the unit. So what we're doing here is we're going to fly out to about one kilometer and as you can see the signal is actually degrading reasonably quickly. Now we're using 25 milliwatts because we're in the CE but also this will help us actually see what's going on a little bit clearer and I've got focus mode on so we can actually see where we've got image breakup. In the top left hand corner you can see which aerials I'm using and we can also see a rough indication of the antenna strength. Now you can see as we came out to one kilometers here it got really bad. I mean basically I would have turned around even if I hadn't actually been going to one kilometer. And still on the way back you can actually notice it's even worse than it was on the way out. And it's taking quite a while to pick back up as well. So this test so far has been pretty much line of sight because it's all up at the same altitude as I am, sitting on the other hill. Now we're going to actually come down into the valley, which means that we'll actually start looking at the penetration tests. You can see we've still got pretty dodgy bit rates at this point, but it's, it's flyable. Now what we're going to do is we're going to hang a right. Now here we're going to actually get quite below the hill line. So you can see up on the left there's actually also a whole load of trees and this is going to be a common point where we're going to have a bit of a breakup on all of the antennas. And we can actually see we would pretty much entirely lose the signal at that point. Now what we're going to do is we're going to climb up the hill. Really we still got a clear line of sight at this point but we're with a few trees in the way so we might get a little bit of breakup. It's not bad but really the breakup is still definitely there and we can see that we just need to get behind a couple of trees and we start getting breakup. So I say this is not perfect because this is basically linear polarization on these antennas. So when we start looking at other antennas hopefully we'll get some improvement. Now as we come around here we're obviously not in front of myself at this point so we're actually using the fact that they're omni antennas. So it's okay. Again, a bit of a break up. Again, I'm going to try to come down a bit lower just at this point, just to see if I can provoke the penetration issues. And yeah, we've got a bit of break up still. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to climb up the hill. You can actually sit, see me sitting at the top of the hill here. You can wave as I go past. And now we're actually going to come alongside me and behind me through the trees. So here what we're looking at is whether or not the antennas are performing well when they're behind me. Now I'm only going out to about 60, 80 meters or so behind me so it's not very far but we want to see what we're going to get break up. Obviously these are anten omni antennas so there's not a real issue here. Now we're going to dip down behind the trees and yep we get a break up because basically the trees are giving us a bit of a problem. So it's okay, but remember this is a pretty limited, but we are on 25 milliwatts. Okay, so now we're going to do a second flight. We're going to do exactly the same path again. This is a bit speeded up because nothing happens here. But this time actually we're using the iFlight stubbies. Now the point of this test is these are LHCP polarized. So are we actually going to get slightly better results? Now, if this were version 1 goggles with their stock antennas we wouldn't have any difference because those are also LHCP but now we're comparing it against the linear antennas from the version 2 goggles and we can actually see that it definitely is a bit of an improvement. So obviously the polarization is helping. Now we start to get a bit of a break up here just as we're coming into turning and then as we turn. Now we will always get a little bit of break up on the turn because we essentially only have one antenna being pointed at the goggles. And then again, it does seem that we also get worse signals as we come back home. But definitely this does feel better than the linear antennas that we're supplied with with version 2 goggles. And in fairness, we're on 25 milliwatts still. So there is definitely room for improvement by upping the powers if you're allowed to. So we're coming down again into the valley. So we're definitely seeing 
penetration issues, but it's picked up quite nicely actually. This would be out at about 700 meters, I think. And we're going to do our sharp right into that problematic area where we dip down. You can actually see that I'm going a little bit lower, and that's because I'm feeling a little bit more confident with this vision. And then, oh, nasty break up there. We actually do see we skip frames and everything, but it did recover really quickly. Also, as we come back up this hill, we're almost at full power again. So that's that's doing really well at closer ranges. Again, just dips a little bit of signal. Here we go behind the trees, and again, we lose it for a little bit. Now, we're coming round here. The issue here is whether or not, again, not so much for Omni antennas, but when we start using a patch antenna, will we get problems? Now. This flight is not exactly the same in every route, but it does give a good feeling, I think, of what's going on. Generally, as I say, these actually feel better. And again, as soon as we dip down really low behind that tree, it just completely goes. So that's a bit of a <laughs> disappointment, shall we say. And again, we're going to climb up the hill, wave to me as we go past. Again, this is all straight on. Nothing should have a problem around here. And then what we're going to see is as we go alongside myself and then behind myself through the trees, let's see if we this time get a little bit more of a consistent signal. Here I'm lining myself up for the gap. Okay, no problem really. We're not really getting any drop in signals. I'd say that's pretty good. Then, okay, behind the trees, yeah, we're starting to see a little bit of signal break up. But compared to the antennas that we got with the version 2 goggles, definitely an improvement because they match the air unit's polar polarization. Now, on to the iFlight stubbies combined with the iFlight Crystal HD patch antennas. So, these patch antennas should give us better directional performance. So this really should help on this long run out. And then what we want to see is whether or not it's helping on the penetration as well. Certainly at this stage of the signal, it's definitely looking much better. We're getting tiny bits of breakup, but this is perfectly flyable. And in fact, if we started increasing power output, then this would actually go a very long way as long as we had clear line of sight. So we're pretty much coming up to the one kilometer mark and yet really we've not got any breakup. Okay. We get a little bit of a dip as we turn, that's to be expected, but it recovers pretty quickly and we're back up to the like 10 megabits already. That's definitely flyable, very, very, very much better than the uh, factory antennas with the V2 goggles and I think better than the stubbies as well. So again, we're coming down. Again, this also feels really good. So the thing about this is it's not that I actually want to fly long range particularly. What I want to do is to actually have confidence in flying. And I find that if the signal is breaking up, I always get a bit of a lack of confidence. So you'll see on these videos that when I'm actually getting better signals, I tend to be flying lower because I just have more confidence in the system and that I'm not going to suddenly lose vision. So here we come to the tricky spot. We've got a really good strong signal all the way down here, much better than we've had before. And we're coming to the bit where we usually get a break up. What happens? Okay, we got a little bit of focus mode, but the signal didn't drop particularly. And I think importantly, notice how the signal picks up again really quite strongly. So we're coming across now. So you remember that in this case, we've got pretty good line of sight, but we are getting some trees in the way. So do we get any break up? No, there's pretty much nothing. I would say that is pretty excellent, actually. This is, in fact, about the same quality level, I believe, as I'm going to get with the DJI FPV in 5.8 gigahertz mode when using 25 milliwatts. Again, a little bit break up, but nothing particularly bad. Yeah, we've got break up. But again, in this particular case, I think I've just come in lower because I'm feeling a little bit more confident. Again, a little bit of a frame skipping. This is obviously all footage directly from the goggles. So...
Again, I think I'm coming in a little bit hotter and a little bit lower just because I'm feeling more confident. And this is actually working quite nicely because this, remember, these are directional. Although we do have the Omnis on top, so perhaps that's helping. Again, we drop a little bit low there. That could be because we've got directional patch antennas. But overall, this is definitely the best combination for me. Now we're going to switch over to the DJI FPV. Now this is not a competition against the drones. They're completely different drones, completely different purposes. However, it is interesting to look at how the 5.8 gigahertz performance actually works. Now here we're with the stock antennas. Now these are linear polarization, but obviously the DJI FPV has linear polarization on the aircraft itself as well. We can see actually that the image quality is pretty good. I've got a bit of a, a roll going on because actually the wind has picked up during the time of doing this. And again, we are on the same power, 25 milliwatts. We're on 5.8 gigahertz and we've got focus mode on. So when we actually start dropping frames, we will start noticing it. Now, there may be differences in the way the two bits of software work. But as you can see, we've got pretty good range. I mean... Really, we've got nothing so far that actually shows any significant signal dropout. So I think at this point, we're getting about the same performance as the air unit with patch antennas, which, I mean, it's newer technology. We would expect some improvements as well. And obviously, the drone and the goggles have been matched. So again, they were coming down. Still, the signal's pretty good. The way I actually did this was I uh, recorded an audio log in the background of my flight experience, which is how I've actually kind of gauged the signal bar strengths as I was looking in the goggles and calling out the HD numbers. Okay, coming into the valley where I get issues. And we're pretty low. Again, because I'm feeling pretty confident I'm getting low. And you can see we would lose line of sight here and... Yeah, we get some breakup, but I think that's pretty good. I mean, that's certainly something you would fly through without any real concern. So this is why when I got the air unit, I was interested in testing different antennas to see if I could get a similar performance as I was getting with the this DJI FPV. Coming across, again, no real issues. Now, again, these are completely different drones. This is not saying that the DJI drone is better. It's just a completely different drone. It's just the fact that we are on the same power, we're on the same frequency range, and it's interesting to see that we get such a better signal. It also would appear that the version 2 goggles, I think, have actually compromised slightly the performance with the air unit. However, at least with the patch antennas, we actually were getting some good performance. Certainly something that I'm quite happy to use. Okay, now we're going to come through the trees. <laughs> now I have to say, I'm nowhere near as confident flying this drone through close quarters. It's expensive to, to fix. And uh, yeah, I'm just not as happy with it in manual mode. But... I want to do exactly the same flight path, so let's uh, give it a go. Hopefully I won't crash. Again, this has got Omni antennas, so again, we shouldn't see any issues. Okay, what about as we come over and behind the tree? Okay, a little bit of break up, but nothing you'd be concerned about. So now we're going out again with this the FPV drone, and this time we've got the iFlight stubbies on. Now what I'm doing here is testing to see whether or not, again, the difference between having the LHCP polarization on the goggles now and the linear polarization on the drone, does it make a big difference? Well, the signal definitely does seem to be a bit weaker. We can definitely see some focus mode breakup going on, but it's usable. It's not a big problem. Now we're coming to the 1K mark. We're going to turn. And yeah, again, nothing particularly bad. Now, the only reason I could ever see using this is if you're using the air unit as I do, 
and then flipping to the DJI FPV, then perhaps if you couldn't be bothered to change the antennas or perhaps you forgot them, then these would definitely be usable. But for sure, the performance isn't as good. But here it's okay. I think that longer range part actually was more of an issue. Again, definitely very flyable. So we're going to come down. Again, you can see that I'm... Well, you can see a bit of the wind, actually. And you can see, actually, that this drone doesn't fly quite as stably as the Freestyler. Again, I'm feeling pretty comfortable, so I'm thinking I'm going a little bit lower. It's definitely shaking around a bit. Into the problematic zone. Yeah, okay. I mean, if anything, I'd say that was less problematic than before. So certainly at closer range, this is not a problem at all. Over behind the trees. Yep, definitely a break up as we went through there, interestingly. We didn't get this on the stock antenna, they were pretty good. And again, a bit more of a break up there. I'd say on balance, these are actually performing pretty much as well as they do on the air unit. Again, I point out this, this is on 25 milliwatts on 5.8 gigahertz. So it is a very much a comparable test. Okay, the bit that always scares me with the FPV drone coming close to anything, ground, trees, <laughs> everything scares me with the FPV drone. Oh, am I going to hit that? Nope, got away with it. <laughs> and I've picked up speed, I think, to get out of the situation as fast as possible. And we come over the trees. Yeah, again, that telltale break up as we come behind the trees. But these would definitely be usable if you wanted to. Okay, now on to using the patch antennas with the Omni antennas that we actually get with the Goggles V2. Now, I did this rather than the iFlight Stubbies because I thought that that's a combination that would be more likely to be usable. So the question here is, will the patch antennas give us a little bit more range, even though they've got the incorrect polarisation? So far, it actually seems pretty much the same, I would say. And we're coming up to the one kilometre turn point. There's no real signal loss. Are we going to get anything as we turn round? A little bit of a drop. We can just see a bit of focus mode creeping in. But actually, I would say that's pretty similar to the stock antennas as it happens. And again, it picks up. Now we're going to come down. Now, bear in mind that if we are using these 5.8 gigahertz antennas we have to make sure that the DJI FPV is fixed into 5.8 gigahertz so you manually select this in transmission you can't run it in auto because it might then drop down to 2.4 gigahertz in which case these aerials would perform really poorly okay round the corner let's see if we get any better penetration as we dip behind the hillside and the trees Yeah, I think that's probably the best that we've had so far. So I think they are actually helping quite a bit. Which is an interesting combination, because this means that you could quite easily, I think, run this with the air unit as well, and I think you would get pretty good performance, actually. That would also mean that you wouldn't have to faff around changing antennas every time you were switching back and forth between the DJI FPV and the air unit. So we come round here. Now we're going to go a bit off axis here from the direction of the patch of tenors. Do we get any more significant dropout? No. Okay, yeah, we get some, but really that's not an issue. Again, I would say it's pretty similar. Now we're going to come up to the trees and go behind the trees. And again, this is going to be where... 
Oh, we got that a little bit <laughs> out of shape. Here, what we're going to actually be doing is coming alongside and behind me. So the Patchington is pointing in exactly the wrong direction at this point. But again, only out to about 60 meters. I'm flying through fast to get past it. No real signal degradation. Up over the tree. Let's see if we get our telltale one behind. Yeah, okay, that definitely breaks up. And it was a bit worse than the stock antennas. But I mean, considering it's uh, directional, that's pretty good, actually. I think very usable. Now, this is the final flight, and it's not really a comparative test. This is actually about looking at the DJI FPV running on 2.4 gigahertz. Now, this is not possible on the air unit because it doesn't support 2.4 gigahertz. But what would be interesting is this is perhaps the performance if in an air unit version 2, it supported 2.4 gigahertz. Now, this is using the stock antenna. So obviously, this is using linear polarization. And we can see there's really no breakup whatsoever. This is something I'd notice very early on with the DJI FPV. Do not put it in auto mode to fly it if you're not in a built up area. If you're out in the open like I am here, always fly it manually in 2.4 gigahertz mode and you will get much better performance. Unfortunately, this is also why there's just no point in using the 5.8 gigahertz with the patch antennas because you get such good performance on 2.4 gigahertz. Again, perhaps if you were in an area which had a lot of Wi-Fi disruption or RF, then you might be on 5.8, in which case that would all change. But here, I get much better penetration. I get much longer range. There's just no real point in doing it. So again, we're going to come through to the problematic area. Again, you can see I just feel more confident at this point. I can keep lower. And we go through the area. Are we going to get any break up? No, absolutely nothing. And I think you can see that I'm flying pretty much the same route. So this is actually really did spoil me when I came to the air unit. This is kind of what I was expecting and it, I just didn't get it. But as I say, with the patch antennas, I'm perfectly happy with the performance I'm getting on 5.8 gigahertz. But this is hopefully what we might get in the future if we're lucky. Okay, there won't be any problems around here. After all, we're using Omni antennas at this point, so it's got a very good range. So let's have a little bit of a think. Of, oh, I nearly hit true. Let's have a little bit of a think about what we've actually kind of seen. So yeah, the DJI FPV, unless you're in a high RF area, you might as well use the stock antennas on 2.4 gigahertz. I mean, this is 25 milliwatts and we've got no issues whatsoever. With the air unit and the version 2 goggles, I think you definitely do want to switch. At least switch to something even like cheap LHCP aerials like the iFlight Stubbies. However, those patch antennas that from iFlight are fantastic. They've definitely made flying much more fun for me with the air unit. Overall, I think we can definitely see that the DJI FPVs has got a better transmission system. But we can hope that that might improve in the future. But it does make it very good for kind of long range stuff or where you're getting behind obstacles. But of course, the, the fun of freestyle drones is all about weaving in and out things. Quite often it's close range. And certainly with the patch antennas, it works really well for me. So I hope that was useful and hope to see you soon. Bye.